And then moving on to the UFC card, which is on the same night, as weird as that is, but uh, UFC 220 featuring Stipe Miocic and Francis Ngannou and Daniel Cormier versus Volkan Uzdemir, both for world championships. We're picking four fights from the main card because one of the main card fights is hot garbage. I'd never heard of either one of the fighters. <laughs> so the first fight on the main card uh, is Thomas Almeida and Rob Font. Um, Thomas Almeida, the most one of the most exciting guys in MMA, not just the UFC. Uh, coming off, he's struggled a little bit recently. Uh, that loss to Cody Garbrandt being the most marquee loss that he's had. But I'm going to pick Thomas Almeida to bounce back in this one. I think he finishes Rob Font. I Almeida always throws wild. What should I say? Punches, kicks mm -hmm. with. What was the one knockout? Was it a fl flying knee? Yeah, he had a flying knee knockout against uh, uh, da, 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 Brad Pickett. Da, da. Brad Pickett, and then he had that nasty knockout against uh, Anthony Burchek. Yeah, my memory is not that great, but I, I do remember him having wild knockouts, and I think you can expect the same thing here because it's not a Cody Garbrandt where you're facing one of the fastest and best stand-up fighters, so I'm expecting a win. Uh, I've also got Thomas Almeida. Right now he's coming off a loss against – what seems to be a very good Jimmy Rivera. And so I definitely, I mean, Rob Font, he's exciting. He's got a lot of tools. I just think that Tominas is going to come through with the dub. The next fight on the card that we are picking anyway is Jean Vellante and Francis. Oh, boy, here we go. Francimar Barrasso. Um, I don't know much about Barrasso. I know Jean Vellante has struggled uh, most of his UFC career, it seems. And that, for that reason, I'm picking Francimar Barrasso. I think Jean Vellante just hasn't been able to find his footing, and I think that's going to continue in this one, and he's going to take another loss uh, Saturday. I don't know anything about these two fighters. I probably don't know if I've ever heard their name, but I'll go with Vellante. I think he's a favorite in this fight, so that has the influence. Uh, I know we've seen him fight uh, before Vellante? Some, during some pay-per-views, yeah. 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 I know I've seen him fight multiple times, and I'm pretty sure he, Brendan has too. But my pick, I also have Volante, just because I have no idea who Francis Barroso <laughs> is. Uh, Volante can knock him out in the first round, but other if it isn't like that, unless Barroso is um, good, has some sort of cardio, it's going to be a very bad fight. But I'm going with John Volante. The light heavyweight championship is on the line between champion Daniel Cormier and Vulcan Uzdemir. Cormier, obviously, somewhat of a paper champion because he didn't win the belt from John Jones, but he does hold the belt right now, and he's going to defend it against Vulcan Uzdemir Saturday. I have Daniel Cormier in this one, although Vulcan Uzdemir is on quite of a little streak here with his uh, very fast knockouts. He obviously possesses a lot of power, but Cormier has faced that before in Anthony Johnson, and he's fought at heavyweight in his career, won the uh, Strike Force Heavyweight Grand Prix. Um, I think Cormier just much more experienced. His wrestling obviously always gives an advantage no matter who he's facing. So I think Cormier uses that and gets the W against Vulcan Uzdemir. I think this has the potential to be a really fun fight and has the potential to be a really boring fight, but I am expecting a boring fight. You're just using Cormier going to use his wrestling to win in this situation just like he did against uh, Johnson. So I'm expecting Cormier to cruise on to a win. I don't even think the Johnson fights, both of them were uh, boring. I thought that uh, they were pretty interesting with Johnson throwing bombs. and Yeah, but that's only the first round. When you're looking at a three, four, or five round fight, you well, know. I think he ended them in the second both times, something like that, maybe the third. Because then he put them down and made them tap. I know he finished them both times. Yeah, but I, there wasn't any really like, well, this is great moments in either one of those fights besides maybe when almost. when Johnson dropped Cormier in that first fight. But outside of that, I think it was it was almost all Cormier controlled and Johnson not looking like he belonged in those fights. Mm -hmm. And uh, I meant to say this when you first were talking about uh, Uzumir's little streak. He's knocking him out so quick because he has no time, right? Right. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a dud. But <laughs> trip, trip, I also trip, have trip. DC winning. I think he's going to uh, just wrestle with him and uh, do what he has to do to take the dub. I would say I would love for Cormier to get put to sleep. Wow. Brennan, wow. Hey, Brennan hates Daniel Cormier. He hates him for no reason. He's the biggest Sean Jones fan in the world, regardless <laughs> of what he may say to us. 
<laughs> he loves John Jones. He has a shrine in his bedroom. I've seen it. You've, why, seen, you've why, seen it. Why do you hate Daniel Cormier? I don't hate Daniel Cormier. You just said you'd love to see him get put to sleep. I don't hate him, but I find him as probably the most boring UFC fighter. I don't like just wrestling. That's all he Tyron does. Tyron Woodley is such a more boring fighter. What happened to your boy Lawler? I mean, that was like three years let's ago. Let's not act like Cormier doesn't have knockouts either, though. I, that, I haven't seen him knock anybody his out. Knock out of Patrick Cummins. Did he knock out uh, Dan Henderson? Am I crazy? I I don't know if he did, but he picked him up and dropped him on his head. Yeah. I, I don't think Daniel Cormier – he can be boring. I don't think he is boring. So yeah. He lays on top of you and just wrestles you, and just I don't like that. I don't understand he does, he how does he it to, can say this but still like Tyron Woodley. He knocked your boy out. He I've seen, him, I've seen him knock out, and that was that was awesome. That's all you've seen of him because what his last three fights were the two Wonder Boy fights. I didn't think either one of those were all that good. People love the one at 205. I didn't think it was that great. And I feel like we talk about Tyron Woodley almost every podcast. That's because Brendan loves him. <laughs> I, I, I don't I love Tyron really Woodley. I really am liking him less and less every <laughs> single time I ever hear his name. Oh, it's so frustrating. Moving I on. I don't understand it because he's literally a 170 DC. Moving on to the main event. Stipe Miocic and Francis Ngannou. In my opinion, the best heavyweight fight of all time. At least the most intriguing anyway. Stipe. The You're going to eliminate all the Kane fights? Over this one? I think this is more intriguing going in than the Kane fights. I think it, the Kane fights might end up being better, but I think this is more intriguing going in just for the mystery factor almost. All right. Um, Stipe, I th- at this point, he's almost had the most defenses in heavyweight history, I believe, right? And he's only had like two. Um, and then Francis Ngannou, who's coming up, who is coming in on a disgusting finish streak with his uh, Kamor that he learned about five minutes before he did it, his vicious knockout of Andrei Olovsky, his vicious knockout of Alistair Overeem. Um, he also knocked out Curtis Blades. Knocked out Curtis Blades in a great fight. Um, mm-hmm. uh, wh- how many UFC fights has Francis Ngannou had, Bryce? Four? Five? So this Something is, his, like I think this is his fifth. I think you're right. So a very young Francis Ngannou, at least young for heavyweight, coming in against and also pretty young Stipe Miocic. Stipe obviously with the experience advantage and the wrestling advantage. I don't think anybody's making the argument that Ngannou does not have the power advantage, but I am picking Stipe Miocic in this one. I think he uses that wrestling as well as his boxing to um, I don't know if this results in a finish. I can almost see this going to a decision. I think Stipe does win but I have no idea how it ends up happening. I'm very much looking forward to this fight. I'm fine with it no matter who wins, but I think Stipe ends up getting the dub one way or another. I think somebody's getting knocked out in the first three rounds, probably the first two to be more realistic. I'm going with Naganu, just hopping on the hype train. He's been knocking dudes out. I mean, so has Stipe, but I'm going to just go with Naganu just because he's a hot man right now. I feel like he has more motivation. I don't know. I don't like. I don't even have a specific reason. I'm just going to Ghana just because my gut is telling me. To be honest. Uh, so I just looked up in Ghana. He's actually had six UFC fights already. This will be number seven. Really? Yeah. Really? Luis and Heat, Curtis Blades, Bo Jan. Not even gonna try to say that. Oh, Anthony really? Hamilton, Andre Arlovski in the ring. But I think it's pretty clear if anyone uh, has heard me talk about Francis Ngannou before. I am the conductor of this hype train. I think he's going to roll into Boston and he's going to knock out Stipe in the first round. Love Stipe, but I think this is Francis's time and he's going to put Miocic to sleep. They both knock dudes out. I just want to see somebody go to sleep on the canvas. Yeah. I'm ve- I'm almost positive someone's going to get put to sleep. This is the most excited I've been for one fight since Cody and TJ. And before that, I mean, I think this is one of the most intriguing fights ever. Oh, yeah, for sure. 